Greetings, my brothers and my sisters. This is past day by the readings from the Refuge Assembly of Yahweh, located 2808, Randy Street, the city of North Virginia. But once again, beloved, we thank Yahweh for this another opportunity to come into your homes, your cars, wherever you might be. So once again, give Yahweh praise and honor for what he's done and for what he's going to do. But this is the day that Yahweh has made. Father, today we know you to be a healer. We know you to be Yahweh Rafi. 
We know you to be Yahweh of Hashem. Yahweh Shalom. Yo Yahweh Shalom. Yo Yahweh. Oh Yahweh, move by your power and by your spirit. Oh Yahweh, how many right there through your faith to the affliction and touch your children? Those aching muscles right there. Yahweh, those terminal illnesses right there. Father, we realize that you are the final doctor. Yahweh, you never. Yahweh, you also faith. And today, Father, we approach your throne right there. That one going through cancer, that one dealing with diabetes, that one having migraine headaches, those side nerves, all those ailments of the inner yes. body. Father, move that right there, Yahweh. Yes. And yes. Yahweh, bring peace in the midst yes. of their song. Yahweh, those right now who are so in the different, those who don't know you are the part of their sin, those right now, Yahweh, who turn their back on you, walk away and fight for you, say, those who you love, you say, Father, move by your power. Yahshua is soon to return. Oh, yeah. It behooves us all to be about our Father's business. The Father today, I that you would live down upon this service. Once again, Yahweh, you have allowed us to come into the yes. call. Yet we'll see you. Oh, Yahweh, Father, touch the call of us. Those right now, Father, who are viewed by Zoom, moved by your power right now. Touch that family. Touch that loved ones right now. Touch relatives right now. Move by your power. Right now, in the precious name of Yahshua, I'm going to and Yahweh, save, save before it's everlasting to me. Let your word go forth today with power, hallelujah. God, I pray you, sir, and Yahweh, strengthen me. Yahweh, give you your words, hallelujah. Save that people. Father, today, as we come to remember and celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of your son on this communion Sunday, Father, lead us here today and stand back. Oh, Yahweh, come back right in this special way. And to Malachi and Yahweh, who are present with us today. Yes. Oh, Yahweh, here. Right now, Yahweh, hallelujah. Wonderful report. Hallelujah. Father, today, touch this service. Look at him upon these souls. Oh, yes, Lord. Strengthen him right now in the precious name oh, of Yahshua HaMashiach. Yes, We thank you. We adore you. We lift you up. We magnify your name. Holy for records, we thank you. There's a peace for God to know. Though our hearts and flesh may fail, there's an anger for our soul. We can say it is well. Our hearts and soul are calm. 
to do in this part of the worship experience. To give Yahweh thanks and praise for what he's done for you. This is your time to be in personal fellowship with you. Give the adoration of thanksgiving from your heart. For he's been so good, done so much for all of us. We have something to give praise for today. You want to start to call me right now. You got something to break out. If you have the activity, and look to the gospel and the blood shed on the wall in your veins, you got something to give praise for today. He's worthy of all praise and all love. Just give him thanks.
so we're gonna go. Let's see how we're gonna pray for that beautiful staff. Because of who you are, I give you honor. Yes, Lord. God, because of who you are, I give you praise. Yes, yes.
name I pray. My soul is safe from harm. So much to give him praise for. Thanking Yahweh for what he's done and for what he's going to do. If we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise him enough. Yahweh truly has been marvelous to all of us. And we praise him today for his goodness, for his kindness. And for the multitudes of his tender compassion. Thank you. I thank him and I praise him for what he's done. And for what he is going to do. Beloved, I'm delighted and thankful to be in the Kahal again and to thank Yahweh for this opportunity. Hallelujah. To come before you behind this podium and this roster to give Yahweh another opportunity to minister to us yes. and to thank him for his son Yeshua. Today we come to remember and to commemorate and celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection of our Savior, Yeshua HaMashiach. Thank you. And so much to give Yahweh praise for, for if we had 10,000 tongues, Hallelujah. we couldn't praise him enough. Yes. for what he's done and for what he's going to do. I'm yes. delighted to be in your presence one more time. Yahweh yes. truly is wonderful and marvelous. And today, yes. beloved, we want to direct your attention to the book of 1 Timothy, yes. chapter 4, and looking around the 16th verse. 1 Timothy chapter 4, and looking at verse 16. The writer of this book, of course, is the late apostle Paul. We know him as Shaul, the writer of three quarters of the new covenant, the ambassador and the apostle to the Gentile nation. Oh, yeah. Yahweh chose two great apostles, one that would minister to the Hebrew people who the world called Jews, yes. and to the remainder population known as Gentiles. And many different ethnicities fall under that title. And we praise Yahweh today for his word. We thank him for this opportunity to stand again before you and to give Yahweh praise and honor one more time. Hallelujah. For if we had 10,000 tongues, we couldn't praise Yahweh enough That's right. for what he's done and for what he's going to do. Shaul ministers to this young pastor who mentored, who was mentored by him and who served under him during his ministry throughout all of Asia Minor. Yahweh put Timothy in good hands with Shaul. And he served Shaul and learned from him. And even as a young pastor, he was a young man with a lot of wisdom. But he received great understanding and Great instructions from the great apostle Shaul. Hallelujah. Yes, he did. And we want to start reading at verse 9 down to verse 16 yes. to get a foundation of where we want to go today. For Yahweh is truly good, and we praise him uh -huh. for all that he's done and for all that he's going to do. Starting at verse 9, this is a faithful saying and worthy of all exception. For therefore we both labor 
and suffer reproach because we trust in the living most high who is the savior of all men especially of those that believe these things command and teach let no man despise thy youth but be thou an example of the believers in word, in conversation, in charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. Till I come, give attendance to reading and exaltation to doctrine. In other words, your scripture reading, your preaching, and your teaching be devoted to it. Neglect, neglect not the gift that is in thee, uh -huh. which was given thee by prophecy, with the laying on of the hands of the presbytery. Meditate upon these things, give thyself wholly to them. Yes. And he says, that thy profiting may appear to all. Take heed unto thyselves and unto the doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing, doing this, thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. I'm sorry? You said four, you said four. First man. Timothy chapter. Four. Yeah. Uh -huh. Did I miss something? Oh no. I missed it. Okay. First Timothy chapter four and verse sixteen. Guard your salvation from those things which will take away from you. Take heed unto thyself and unto doctrine. Continue in them. For in doing this Thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. Hallelujah. God your salvation mm -hmm. from those things which would take it away from you. God your salvation, your deliverance, your redemption. For Yahshua came to give you. God it with all of your life. Hallelujah. Because there is a source. There is an entity. There is a force among us lurking to take it away from you. And I want to talk today a little bit about that because that attitude started over in the book of Acts mm -hmm. chapter 2 on the day of Pentecost. And I want to just reemphasize that Shaul is in agreements with his spiritual brother Cephas, we know as Peter. On the day of Pentecost, 70 nations from all around the world ascended on the city of Jerusalem, we know as Jerusalem in the Gentile tongue, but Jerusalem, the city of Yahweh. Yeah. And on that day, a transformation took place it was in the city of Jerusalem in a little upper room where 120 people were assembled. Yes, sir. Oh, yeah. The prophetic prophecy from Joel, Joel chapter 2 and verse 38 came to fruition and came to its fullness as it was prophesied by the prophet. In that day saith Yahweh, I shall pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your young men shall see dreams and your old men shall see visions. And upon my servants and my handmaids, Yahweh said he will pour out his spirit. It was on that day in the second chapter of the book of Acts, in verse 40, that the apostle Cephas said to us, and with many other words did he testify and exalt, saying, Save yourselves. 
from this untoward generation. Yes. Save yourself from this crooked, perverse generation. Yes. This was over 2,000 years ago. In other words, escape from this perverse generation, this false-minded generation, this wicked generation. Save yourself. And I want to emphasize this morning that no one can save anybody else right. but their self. We can encourage, we can pray for one another, we can lift each other up, we can exalt each other, we can give words of warning, we can do everything we can to point brothers, sisters, loved ones in the right direction, but no one can save anyone but yourself. We're living in a time now where evil men are waxing worse. It is quite evident from sermons all over the earth, permeating from pulpits all around the world. That the time in which we're living is a difficult and critical time. It's a time to be mindful of the fact that Yeshua is soon to return. And yes, I hear people say, ministers have been saying that for years. But here's, here's the reality that most people never think about. Uh -oh. Yahshua is returning for you as an individual. You must ask yourself the question, how much time do you have left? Hallelujah. And will you be ready when Yahshua comes back? Now, should he take you before he physically returns back to the earth? Uh -huh. That remains to be seen. But saving yourself is a mindset and an attitude that Satan is trying to distract and depart people from. We're living in a world now where we cannot be silent. Hallelujah. We gotta be vocal, we gotta speak out, and we gotta cry loud and proclaim the word of Yahweh. Mm -hmm. On last Sunday, we spoke and we talked about the Laodicean attitude. Oh, yeah. A world that's gone just totally one-sided, disregarding Yahweh's word. And I've even heard some people say Yahweh needs to get over it. When you think about Yahweh needing to get over it and listen to how the creature is talking to the creator. Yahweh sits back even in his wisdom and he waits. He's tolerant and he's patient. The same one who says Yahweh needs to get over it is the same one in the same attitude from last Sunday that says, well, you know, the culture during that time necessitated Yahweh doing certain things. It was the culture. And I'm learning now how they're changing and twisting the narrative to fit their own agenda. Yahweh is not Mark saying concerning his promise. Mm -hmm. Yahweh has said what he will tolerate and he has said what he will not tolerate. Yeah. We don't negotiate with Yahweh. We don't sit down with him and talk to him and say, well, let's look at this another way, Yahweh. <laughs> when Yahweh tells us, this is the way I said it and this is the way that you're gonna do it. Hallelujah. No one negotiated with Yahweh when he decided to burn Sodom and Gomorrah and the three other cities that we oftentimes neglect to speak about in the book of Genesis. It was five cities that were destroyed. It wasn't just Sodom and Gomorrah. It was three other additional cities that were destroyed in scripture. And during that time, that culture as they, as the world has deemed to, to, to put it now, the culture of that time was a very perverse and a very wicked culture. That's right. They were doing everything they were big enough to do. Mm -hmm. And when you think about the mindset and the attitude of the Laodiceans last week, Yahweh met us here and he spoke boldly from his word through his messenger to say, you don't tolerate and you don't put up with this excuse of culture and the narrative being twisted you stand on what the word of Yahweh says. How does that fit you in 2024? Of September 1. 
on the first day of September, our first Sunday communion service. And Pastor is here now reminding you to save yourself from this crooked, untoward, perverse, wicked generation. These words still echo today as they echoed over 2,000 years ago in the city of Jerusalem yes. when the 120 disciples, the followers of Yahshua, came down from that upper room. And Yahweh allowed them to speak to 70 different nations in all the tongues of the earth during that time for the Hebrew people to understand that this power that had just hit in that room that came in the form of a rushing mighty wind and appeared before them as tongues of cloven fire and beckoned them to speak an utterance as the tongues told them to open their mouths. And as they opened their mouths, they began to speak in languages from all around the earth. Yahweh let them go downstairs from that upper room. They were on the second floor. And when they hit that first floor, the power of the Ruach HaKadosh was so mighty upon Cephas. He began to preach and to proclaim the word of Yahweh in such a way. An uneducated man, just a plain, normal fisherman, was now echoing and speaking words. And what we forget sometimes, you have to think for a second. How was Cephas able to articulate and speak in all those different languages. Hallelujah. You wrap your head around there for a minute, because sometimes we forget. Cephas was speaking in many different languages. What kind of sermon did he deliver that day? And then he got to the 38th verse and he said, repent every one of you and be immersed be baptized in the name of Yeshua HaMashiach for the remission of your sins. And after this, you shall receive the gift of the Ruach HaKadosh, the world called the Holy Spirit or the Holy Ghost. And you got to understand as culture, as manipulation of scripture, as insertion of scribes, as translations have twisted and caused, caused us to just to be in the muck and mire of digging out of all of this mess. Pastor E is here to tell you, after you pull back all of the trash and all of the manipulation and all of the, the cunningness and the craftiness of the devil, That's right. as he penetrated the minds of the Roman Catholic Church to take words out of scripture, you need to save yourself from this crooked generation. That's right. You cannot serve Yahweh in lies. You cannot serve Yahweh in your feelings. You must serve Yahweh in truth. Yahshua said in John 14 and 6, I am the way, the truth, and the life, L-I-F-E. He said, no man comes into the Father except he come by me. Oh, yeah. When you want to think about truth, truth is a person. It's not a concept. It's not a way of thinking. Truth is a physical person. That physical person was identified in scripture. His name is Yahshua. Hallelujah. Truth is also life. Mm -hmm. He identified himself and he said he is eternal life and he, he is the giver of eternal life. Hallelujah. Truth is also the directing door, the way in which we should go. When you think about the way, the truth, and the life. Saving oneself from this untoward generation, you got to identify with those three main descriptors of who Yahshua is. He is the way. Are you following the way? Hallelujah. Shaul said, I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course, which is my race. He said, and I have kept the faith. And the faith translated is the way. I've said on many occasions, as the day, all around the world, this is the most segregated day of the week. <laughs> Today is the most segregated day of the week. We got black churches meeting. We got white churches even in September 1, 2024. There are places in this country right now that if you were to walk into an all-white congregation, you would feel a certain way. 
You'll walk in and people will look at you strange. You may be dressed appropriately and look fine, but you still are other of a different ethnicity, a different color. It is amazing how Satan planted this seed so many years ago. Yes. I don't know how many understand this book. The stories that you're about to read are true, but the names have been changed to confuse the innocent. Oh, yeah. And what Satan did was confuse the masses. Oh, yeah. That's 12th what chapter Revelation tells us and speaks profoundly by saying, the dragon, that great dragon was hurled and tossed out of heaven. Yeah. Mm. And three quarters of Yahweh's Malachians, we know his angels, were tossed along with him. When that dragon hit the earth, the word of Yahweh lets us know that he had an agenda. And in his agenda, he became the deceiver, the master deceiver. And he is shrewd in his deception. He makes counterfeit things appear to be the real thing. He takes names and he changes them and he takes all the honor and the Shekinah away from Yahweh's people. I thought it was interesting because Pastor E has always been on this journey with names. I don't know how many understand or even know this. David's wife, Bathsheba, her name is also pronounced Bathsheba. She was married to Uriah, we call Uriah the Hittite. And if you trace the lineage all the way back to Joseph, all the way back to Abraham, you can see the lineage of how Yahweh worked through scripture. Joseph, Yahshua's legal father, not earthly father, but legal father by paper. He wasn't his biological father. Joseph was his legal father. Mm -hmm. Miriam being his earthly mother through the conception of being impregnated by Yahweh himself, that spirit being in him. But if you trace Yahshua's roots all the way back, and here's the irony of scripture. This book that we call the Bible, this book that we call the Bible is better known as scripture. It is a book and a story about a group of people. And this particular group of people are from Hebrew origins. These Hebrew people are people of color. What am I saying? What is Pastor E saying? I'm not here to substantiate or to prove that Yahweh brought into the world his son, who was of a dark race, because Yahshua came from the lineage out of the house of David. If you do some his historical study and going back and looking at history, the scriptures are about a set of black people. This is what the Bible is about. Although the world gave you a charted view, an illustrated view, a pictorial view, mm -hmm. they put in your head of a certain hue, a certain texture of hair, mm -hmm. a certain color of eyes, mm -hmm. a certain race of people. And I said race of people because all human existence on the earth all have the same blood that Yahweh put in Adam and Eve. Mm -hmm. Nothing changed with the color of the blood yeah. in our bodies. That's right. Isn't it amazing? Mm -hmm. Yellow people, brown people, red people, black people, Caucasian people, we all bleed red. That's right. Have you ever seen any blue blood? Mm -mm. Have you ever seen any yellow blood? Mm -hmm. Ever wonder why it's just red blood? <laughs> and then have you ever wondered the fact that when Yahshua came into the world, he had a DNA Hallelujah. in his system. And in his DNA, his DNA can be traced all the way back to the house of David, past the house of David, all the way back to Yosef, all the way back to Abraham. And when you look at the ethnicity of all 
those tribes and the tribe that Yahweh came through, the house of Yehuda. It was of a colored ethnicity. Hallelujah. And how does that fit in today with a crooked and perverse generation? <clears throat> what separates the world today and why we can't seem to get it together is because deception has just muddied the path of Yahweh's people to the point where we're dealing with all kinds of distractions. We're dealing with race. We're dealing with policies now and elections that are coming up in the next couple of months to elect someone for leadership in this country and totally forgetting the fact that Yahshua is soon to return. What does this have to do about saving yourself from this crooked and perverse generation? This generation is not going to straighten itself out. The word untoward, crooked, it's going to stay crooked until the day Yahshua returns. That's right. The question is, why are you in this crooked, perverse world, this generation, are you going to straighten yourself out? Hallelujah. Are you going to get your act together? Are you going to follow the precepts that Yahweh has ordained? We live in a world right now where you've got to make a decision. You're either going to follow Yahweh all the way or don't follow him at all. That's right. There is no part-time relationship with Yahshua. There is no part-time love affair. You don't love Yahshua just on Sunday and during the course of the week, you're loving the devil. Mm. We got to work out our own soul salvation with fear and with trembling. Yeah. That scripture says, and with many other words did he testify and exalt, say, save yourself. Oh, yeah. Escape from this perverse generation. How are you making preparations now to escape from this world? Mm -hmm. Yahshua has already given us salvation. We learn over there in the book of Timothy, just a few moments ago, this crooked and perverse and wayward generation that we're dealing with right now. The world is not thinking about God and their salvation. Mm -hmm from the things which can take it away from you. What are some things that can take your salvation away from you? Your job, your family, your husband, your wife, your children, your loved ones, a crooked, and damnable doctrines that are out here now and false prophets that are leading people astray by the millions. That's right. Every Sunday, preaching and teaching lies to the people. Paganism is alive and well. No one is addressing it and correcting it. The fact that we get up every Sunday and we proclaim Yahweh Yeshua HaMashiach, and you would think for a second, all the years are proclaiming Yahweh Yeshua HaMashiach. And I've asked myself this question. Why is it I can come across and run into clergy brothers that I've known for over 40 years and everybody has the same persona when they see me in the streets? What's that, Pastor e? Let me dramatize for a second. Doc! Hey, man, look, 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 man, you're looking good, Doc, looking good. Man, we got to get together. We got to get together, have some lunch, have some lunch. They, and they're backing up while they're talking to me. <laughs> and I'm saying to myself, no, I don't seem to have any hygiene problem. No, I brush my teeth. Can't be my breath. Can't be my body odor. What is the problem? <laughs> and how are... Uh, these terms and this illustration have anything to save yourself from this untoward generation. When I go back and I reminisce and I think about the scriptures and the scripture says if you want salvation, salvation is only found in one name. That's right. Now I've departed from Doc, how you doing? Explain to me Acts 4 and 12. Neither is there salvation in any other. 
For there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. Given among, given among who? Men. Men meaning the world, the entirety, all ethnicities. There's only one name. I need to find out that name. Hallelujah. Because I'm trying to save myself from this perverse generation. And then the brother tells me in the 38th verse of the second chapter of, of Acts, repent every one of you, everybody, and be immersed in the name, not names, name. I got to find out what name that is. <coughs> Now, I've been told that you need to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Wow. The Lord Jesus Christ. The only problem with that narrative is this. Confusing. Lord Jesus Christ are fabricated names. How can, how, can, how, how can you stand up there and say that and you're supposed to be a Christian? How can you do that? Well, first of all, Lord is not even a name. Lord is a title and it's roughly 500 years old. Go back and look at this old English roots from whence it came. God is not a name. God is a title. There are many gods as the world has deemed them. Today is Sunday. Tomorrow is Monday. And as I said to many people who some found it strange, what does it have to do with a perverse and a crooked generation? All the days of the week are named after Roman gods. All the months of the year are named after Roman gods. January through December are all Roman gods. Who made those names up? And Jesus, 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 Jesus. Who is Zeus? Well, he's a Greek. He's the most powerful Greek deity that the Greeks worship. Do a little research and a little study. By the way, this thing is called a this thing is called a smartphone and not a dumb phone. <laughs> and I ask people oftentimes, when was the last time you took your smartphone and looked up the word God? This ain't a Pastor E breaking down on God, Lord, and Jesus. Because I've told you many times on many occasions. I sat down with anybody, I don't care who you are, from the Pope on down to the dog catcher and prove to me that the Messiah's name is Jesus. Now you can go and start doing some digging where you're going to stop and run into a brick wall. This Messiah that we call Jesus and here's his crooked generation. What does this got to do with saving yourself? This Messiah that we call Jesus was of Hebrew origin. That's right. Only problem with that is the Hebrew language don't have a J in it. That's right. Don't have a J in it. And now you're gonna now you're really gonna test my my intelligence when I ask you to pronounce the word hallelujah, spelled H-A-L-L-E-L-U-J-A-H. What that got to do with a crooked and perverse generation and communion Sunday? Everything. Well, you gotta be reminded that you never hear anybody say hallelujah. <laughs> When's the last time you heard somebody say hallelujah? And I questioned people and I put them on the spot. I said, I want you to say a hallelujah seven times. I'm chipping out. Say it as fast as you can. I ain't seen nobody yet been able to do it without getting tongue tied. I see them try. Look, 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 look. I, I, no, 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 no. Go back and try it again. And you try to say a hallelujah seven times as fast as you can and watch what Yahweh do with your tongue. And you can be a speech specialist. You can even try to practice it. And the best of the best can't do it. But y'all can let that word hallelujah just flow out your mother and water. You know why? Because he put that in his name. That's right. Hallelujah. And just in case you might get it twisted and some folk want to be stuck on stupid, In January of 2000, it took Bill Clinton and some scientists to do a genetic study of the human body. And during Bill Clinton's administration, he, what, he, what he did here was, 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 was awesome. 
They did a genetic study of the human anatomy. And you can go online and check this out. Here are some of the best surgeons and scientists of the world, but mostly scientists. They did a study of the DNA in the human body. And after their conclusions, they came up with a research that blew the world wide open. They found out in all the cells of every human being in the world, there are four letters embedded in our cells. That's right. Mm -hmm. And those four letters are of Hebrew origin. Hallelujah. Now, what does a Chinese baby and a Russian baby and a French baby and an African baby all have in common? Mm. They all got the same signature in their body by the one who created them. The blueprint. And that signature in their body ain't God, ain't the Lord, ain't Jesus, not Christ, not Buddha, not Allah, not Krishna, not Theos, not Dominos, not Karyos, but your head wall, Yahweh. That is something I made up. Do a research. What that got to do with saving yourself from this untoward generation? Yeah. Right now, you got to know exactly where you stand and where you're going. That's right. This Yahweh Yeshua can't be just in your mouth on Sunday. Mm -hmm. It's got to be in your mouth every day. Oh. Let me retract. Mm -hmm. Yahweh don't want his name in your mouth. He want it in your heart. That's right. right. Hallelujah. Any man that would lose his life for my name's sake, what did Yahshua promise? He said to you, how many, how many of you believe that? How many of you truly believe you, you'll find your life again? Yahshua ain't joking. He ain't playing around. Time may come, brothers and sisters, where you may have to stand up for Yahweh and Yeshua. Pastor E may, may not be around. Mama might not be around. Brother, sister may not be around. Daddy may not be around. And you got to stand on your own. But you stand strong and you stand boldly. If you deem to take my life and somebody tell you to deny the name of Yeshua, you tell them, you, well, brother, you know, you, you just need to go and do what you got to do. Because I believe, my, I, believe my, I believe my Savior. I believe my risen King. I've come today to worship him in spirit and truth. I've come today to celebrate his death, burial, and resurrection. He took me out darkness and brought me into light. Hallelujah. I come today to eat the bread that represents his mutilated body. I come to drink the wine that represents his blood. And in this whole communication today of remembering him, I ask him to forgive me of anything that I've done wrong, any sins that I may have committed. I don't want to drink or eat damnation to my soul today. But in remembrance of him, I understand that I'm living right now in a perverse and crooked generation, and it's not going to get any better. It's going to get worse. That's right. Where are you standing right now in your fellowship with Yahweh? Hallelujah. Are you getting yourself saturated and rooted in his word? Yahweh told us that he has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. A sound mind is a mind, a mind that's rooted, that's grounded, that's based on some kind of foundation. Let the same mind that dwell in Yahshua Messiah dwell where? Also in you. What does a Yahshua mind look like? In a crooked and perverse situation. A crooked and perverse generation. Your situation may necessitate you standing up. You may have to come out your mouth and say things that are not popular. As I said on last week, I spoke briefly about some of the sins that Yahweh disliked. And I emphasized two of the biggest ones that are on the election policy and ticket this, this, this election year. Abortion and homosexuality. The scripture talks about it? Absolutely. Do we stand for it? There is no if, and, or but when it comes to shedding innocent blood. There is not a but scripture. 
There's not an if scripture. Yahweh talks about not shedding the blood. That's right. Innocent hands. Babies who are deemed to come into this world and we make a decision that they're not coming. We're going to destroy them for whatever reason. Hallelujah. We're going to kill them. And because I decide that this feeling that I have, today I'm a man and next week I decide I want to be a woman. Mm. Well, I got a problem. I got a real problem with a man going in the restroom behind my wife who's dressed like a woman and he decided that he wanted to be a woman. Now he going in the restroom, he going in the same restroom where my wife is going in and instead of having the same reproductive organs that my wife got, it, got he got something swinging between his legs. And I'm being as transparent as I possibly can. I got a problem with that. Come on. That's real transparent, bro. Come on. And I don't care how you try to sound high with your voice. That deepness is going to come out, bro. And you still a man. It's a pathetic thing to sit there and see a man dressed up like a woman. He trying his best to be a woman. You won't. You won't. You weren't born that way. I'm going to come back and I'm going to say it again. I want you to think about it. This is the first crooked generation. This is the thinking right now. I can go to a plastic surgeon. I can have him to cut it off. I can have him to cut, tuck, bend, twist, do everything he wants. And when you get through tucking and pulling and patting and doing everything, shaping and molding and sculpting, it still ain't what you think it is. That's right. That's right. That's right. Pastor, you keeping it real this morning? Show sure am. And to that sister, I don't care how much your swagger change, and you may pimp better than I do. You may have a bop and a weed while you're walking. And they can sew something on and that can swing between your legs. But it will never be. Hello, somebody. It will never be what Yahweh intended for it to be on a man. And you're going to have to do a whole lot of things to make it work. And it still won't be right. <laughs> Crooked! <laughs> Tore up from the flow of crazy generation. <laughs> this is where we are right now. Save yourself from this perverse, crooked generation. Look what, look what, look, look, look what Cephas is saying to us. Look what Timothy is saying to us. Don't let nobody steal your salvation. Stand on Yahweh's word. That lay out of sin attitude is alive and well, and it's 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 like a bulldozer. It's it's just covering and going through the assemblies and the churches. And it's got folk compromised, and folk who one time stood strong came out their mouth of what the word said. Now their conversation has come sounds a little bit like this. Well, I can see what you're saying, sister. You know, in certain cases. Uh, certain things like that, you know. Yeah, 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 I can see that. And then, and then, this person is just mentally challenged. You know, they they're just going through some mental some some mental challenges. Well, let's see how mental of a challenge was Sodom and Gomorrah. Did Yahweh have a breakdown that day? No, Yahweh didn't. What the people did. And these men come to the city. And the brother says, you can have my daughters. My daughters are virgins, have never been touched by a man. Man, we don't want your daughters. We want them brothers. We want to have our way with them brothers. And what you don't know, those ain't brothers. 
Those are forms that you can identify with. But brother, you have no idea what you're getting ready to deal with. We want them. Get your family out of here. And then the same thing he says, whatever you do, don't look back. And, folk, and that's what folk are doing now. Folk, folk have done the same thing Lot's wife did. Look back. Look back. Folk are turning back from the truth. You're caught up in this perverse generation. You're caught up into a world right now where you want to be a part of the popularity. You don't want to go against the grain. You don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. I don't care who they are. We all got them in our family. We all got them in the assembly. We got them on our jobs. They are all over the place. And when I said they, let me clarify. I don't have a hatred for homosexuals, lesbians, or anybody. They are all souls. And they're all sinners, just like you and me. Only difference is we decided to make Yahshua our choice, accept him as our personal savior, take on him by water, baptism, immersion, and the receiving of his royal hakadosh, mm -hmm. And to divert and retreat from that perverse thinking, that crooked generation. In a world, but not what? Uh, of it. Mm -hmm. Yahweh's still on board from last week. He ain't stopped. And he's saying right now, that lay out of sea and attitude, save yourself from this crooked generation, mm -hmm. this perverse generation. Look what he says, and with many other words yeah. did he testify, and he exalts, saying, save yourselves. Then they that gladly received his word were what? Verse 41, were immersed, and the same day that were added unto them about 3,000 souls. 3,000 souls were added that day at that service, that first service of the first assembly. 3,000 souls took heed to what Cephas had said. And of the 3,000 souls, all of them were not of the same language. Look how mighty Yahweh used Cephas that day. Verse 38, when he preached it, he preached it in all kind of tongues. And they received it. Fishermen, uneducated man, Yahweh used in that capacity. And 3,000 souls were added that day. We got to think about these sermons. Lay out a C and add it to. What is Yahweh trying to say? What is he moving? And even right now, as we're in this season of election, this season of trying to decide who to vote for. I love what Sister, what Sister Kim Joyner wrote in her comments on the uh, YouTube scriptures, I mean, you, the YouTube channel, and she was commenting on the sermon of last week, and she said she was going to vote the scripture way. And I thought that was powerful. I'm going to vote the scripture way. What she's saying is, I'm voting what Yahweh said. Now you can read between the lines and take it like who? Take it, take it any way you want. You look, at, you look at the two candidates and see which one is closer to Scripture and one, which one is the farthest away from Scripture. And you may not like either one of them. And you may choose not to vote at all. But choose the Yahweh way. What Yahweh has to say. Not how you feel. Not the color of somebody's skin, not as pretty as they can smile, or not, not as mean as they can frown. But choose the Yahweh way because this crooked, perverse generation, Yahweh's taking notes and all this stuff. And we all going to stand before the judgment seat on that day. And here's the thing that most people forget. Ain't nobody standing with you. Johnny Crockett won't be there. You ain't got to worry about whether or not the, the glove fit. You better, you better worry more about how your life fit. And that go from the, that go from the pulpit to the back door because I'm going to be standing there for myself and you're going to be standing there for yourself. Hallelujah. Ain't nobody escaping that. And all these cremations that we're having now, the funerals. 
Some folk are under the impression that once, once you burn my body up, that's it. Didn't the word of Yahweh say every knee is going to bow? And every tongue is going to confess. Well, Pastor, how can you, how can you, how can knees be bowed and how can tongues confess if they burnt up? But first of all, who you think you who you think you're dealing with? Yahweh spoke and it came into existence. Well, all them folk that were burnt up, listen to this now. Listen to this. Listen, this this this, this something to wrap your head around. <clears throat> When my husband and my wife's ashes were thrown into the ocean, and the, the ashes went everywhere, and the fish ate, and the fish ate the ashes, and we ate the fish, <laughs> and after we ate the fish, well, y'all know what you do after you eat the fish. <laughs> Pastor ain't gonna take it that a day. And then the waste goes wherever it goes. And the ashes are in that. Well, when do the ashes leave the earth? They don't. And Yahweh is so detailed that he even knows about that mosquito in Venezuela that got arthritis in his left leg. <laughs> Think about what I just said. <laughs> this mosquito been around a long time. He got arthritis in his left leg. He lived in Venezuela. Y'all would know about it. <laughs> now, how detailed, how, how detailed is Yahweh? Does anything escape him? Nothing. Not even a little small atom. Something we can't even see with the physical eye. Yahweh looking right at it. He went on to tell Job something like this. He said, Job, tell me how old the earth is. How deep is the ocean? Job, do you know anybody in your thinking who can command the lightning, the lightning and the thunder to come and stand at attention before him? <laughs> Yahweh tell the lightning, come here! And the lightning comes and stand at attention before him. Yahweh, where will you have us to go? This is who you're dealing with. And then he says, you know, who do you know that can feel heaven and earth at the same time? Before the earth was even formed, before the mountains were even brought forth, he said, I was Yahweh. Before there was a Hebrew people. And stop saying this stuff. Oh, Yahweh is the Hebrew name. No, it ain't. <laughs> Yahweh is the name that he revealed to the Hebrew people. That's the difference. He was Yahweh before there was a Hebrew people. You mean to tell me Yahweh didn't have no name until, until he, he had to make Abraham and Moses first? <laughs> now, how stupid does that sound? The creator, of, the creator of heaven and just heaven and earth, let alone all of the galaxies, because man is finding out there are many, 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 many more galaxies. And they don't lost, they don't lost count of, of the planets, what they call planets. Yahweh yeah, said they are innumerable. Who are you dealing with? And this little planet right here, he saw that fly. He saw that fly on your food with an attitude. He got mad because you, you, you swung and the fly came back. He saw that fly. <laughs> you always say, I know the fly, I made him. You know, it's comical when you think about it. The bumblebee and the waltz and all the, all the things that, 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 that we just look at and don't even think about. Y'all always crazy that thing. He saw every last one. Now, how many flies do you think on the earth? Yahweh laid the last one up. Now, y'all may not think about this. If them flies got names, y'all we know them too. Because last time I looked, they said the stars are what? Innumerable. 
and Yahweh knows every star by what? Name. Who you dealing with? Who you dealing with? In the little short time that all of us got left here, yeah. Pastor gonna leave you with this and I'm done. We're gonna get into our community. Little time you got left, make every day your top priority to please Yahweh, to follow his ordinances, to do as he has commanded. I ain't saying you're perfect. I ain't saying you're not gonna fall down, get back up, get back in the race and keep it moving. Because we're all gonna appear and he's gonna, he, he's gonna take an account of all the good deeds and guess what, the bad ones too. Yeah. Ain't nothing gonna go before him. Every knee gonna bow and every what? Confess. All them ashes that were cremated, them bodies are coming back. <laughs> Yahweh can speak. And you, you standing right there before Yahshua. Where, where, where all that come from? Who, wait a minute. Who, who do you think you're talking to? I created all of this. I can speak right now and have your mama and your daddy standing right there if I want to. That's who I am. Yahshua mm. mm. said, don't nobody take my life. I lay it down when I want it, and I pick it up. Today, we come to celebrate the death, burial, and resurrection. I'm so thankful that Yahshua picked his body back up. Hallelujah. Even told us what he was going to do. I'm going to lay it down. But in three days, this temple coming back. And this temple is not only coming back, but he said, but if I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto me. That same Messiah, that same Hamashiach, who was impaled on that day. You know, Satan did a J-O-B on us. We reverence the cross. We look at the cross as a sacred religious symbol. And this origin is totally embedded and saturated in paganism. Yahshua was not even, he was not even impaled on a cross. And the symbol of the cross goes all the way back to Egypt. <clears throat> its symbol belonged to a deity that the Egyptians worshiped called Bacchus. That was its symbol before Yahshua even came onto the earth. That cross followed us through generations all the way down to the new covenant. That word crux comes from the word where we get crucifixion. Exelon is the word, which means a tortured stake. It looks like a big, huge, gigantic pencil. Yahshua was not impaled this way. He was impaled with his hands above each other. Hallelujah. And one hand was placed on the other. A 14-inch stake was driven, between, was driven through both hands. One foot was placed on the other. The 14 inch stake was driven through both feet. And he was pinned on a snake just like a slab of meat. Go back and do a little research. And that torture stake today, we're going to remember that death, his resurrection, being placed in a cave, and how he victoriously came back. And the Father sent to us his son. That whosoever believed in him would not what? But have what? Yahweh didn't send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that through his son the world might be saved. He that believeth is not what? Condemned. But he that believeth not is what? Already condemned. Why? Because he didn't believe in the name. He's not believing in the what? The name. Of who? This is the what? Condemnation. That what has come? Men of darkness. Why? Save yourself from this perverse unto one generation. Let's give Yahweh a break. At this time, we're going to ask Ella Ronald Green to come today and to lead us in our communion and to give us words of exaltation and benediction. Let's receive Ella Green with a holly hallelujah. So happy to have him back. Hallelujah.
sure that's sweet as possible, but sure. Thanking Yahweh for the opportunity to have fellowship with our believers. Yes, yeah. To share Yahweh's word uh -huh. that brings forth clarity yes, and truth unto every human being that desires it. You know, um, we're living in times where men love darkness rather than light. Yes, and they want to accept the life of y'all symbolically life. They don't even want to take communion. You know, because they get away from the ideologies and philosophies and they promote false realizations. And it is so dangerous to, to think that man would conjure up but but it wasn't long ago. It, it started from the beginnings. And the languages just confound the wisdom of the wise and bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. You see, like Pastor says, you know, uh, we need Yah. We need Yah for truth. We need Yah for righteousness, for life. Hallelujah. And so it is through the blood yes, yeah. of Yah we receive life. And so the wine became reflective of that, indicative of that. Yeah. So at this time, if you would get your what's symbolic of the wine of Yah. Oh, and, and, and also the bread. The bread as reflective of the words, the word of life in Yah to teach us what is right, what is proper before Yahweh. So we'll start with the bread. At this time, I ask that each of you would take your bread and adjust it. Mm, kind of crunchy. Well, appealing. And so, it is with the bread we become indoctrinated for truth, righteousness in Yahshua Hamashiach, Yahweh. And so, you know, it's amazing because, like you said, men don't want truth. A lot of men do not want truth. They want darkness. And they want other people to have it. And it's dangerous. So we need the blood of Yahshua to be assimilated and cultivated into the life of Yahshua. So at this time, I would like for you to adjust symbolically what is the life of Yahshua into our bodies. Oh, Lord. Mm. Yes, and thanking Yahweh for this opportunity to engage, indulge for realization and expectation of the truth in Yah that we be made whole in the righteousness of Yahshua Hamashiach. Yes, Yah. I said it reaches
in our minds and it's still in our souls the truth of the word of Yahweh and the name of Yahweh both now and forever hallelujah hallelujah